It's Weekend Joe, driven by Munganass St. Louis Acura and Munganass Alton Toyota here on ClavesOnline.com. And we welcome on to the show right now, former Major League Baseball shortstop. He is Omar Vizquel. And uh, Omar, first of all, welcome to the show. And it's a shame, I think, that I'm not introducing you as Hall of Famer, Omar Vizquel. I think, it's a, uh, I think it is a tragedy that you're not in the Hall of Fame yet in Major League Baseball, but welcome. Well, thank you, Joe. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, the Hall of Fame is one of the most exciting things that a baseball player can ask for after he retire. I think uh, just be mentioned, you know, to the top of the cream of the game uh, is a really exciting thing and way to uh, to retire. And it is an honor for me every time my name come up and, and, and mention the Hall of Fame. Uh, two, I'm, I got the numbers up here, 2,877 hits. So uh, just short of the, the 3,000 number and 11 gold gloves uh, in your day. Here in St. Louis, I mean, as you as you know of just you know being a baseball guy, uh, we know a thing or two about gold gloves here in St. Louis, especially at that shortstop position. 11 gold gloves is uh, just an amazing accomplishment. And you and I were talking about it before we went on the air. You only came through St. Louis one time in, in your career. That's, uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it is crazy. You know, uh, from all the teams that I play, uh, I play only for the Giants in the National League. Uh, I played there for three years because uh, there was a year where I was hurt and I didn't get to go to St. Louis very often. Obviously, it's a beautiful town. Uh, the land of my favorite shortstop, Ozzy Smith. And, uh, you know, it's just awesome. Every time that they start comparing numbers with him, uh, it's it just an honor for me just to be uh, on that kind of conversation, talking about the best. And too sad that I didn't get to see him taking grounders or, or watching play. Um, you know, I always see the highlights on TV, but that's all I got from from Aussie. So defensively, and being a as as a good of a defensive shortstop as you were, just watching the highlights of Ozzy Smith, what kind of things can did you learn just from watching highlights of Ozzy Smith as you were growing up and as you were learning how to play at the big league level? Well, obviously, uh, not everybody got the the hand coordination and the arm and the strength. Every shortstop is different; uh, they build different. I noticed that Ozzy have a really strong arm that uh, he got a, a great range because uh, we have to do it when we play in turf. In extra turf, you have to play a little deeper and you have to get to a lot of balls, diving uh, balls. And, and obviously the, the trademark, that was a flip every time that he took the field. But, you know, um, um, I got my way to fielding ground balls. Uh, you know, he uh, have a different way. Uh, I think uh, the American style of fielding ground balls is a little bit of, different than than the latino way um you know um i consider um uh Aussie one of the best ever to play the position and just the fact that you get to see the highlights make in those plays is just unreal what what is the difference how how, how what is the difference between the way that you said latino players take ground balls and, and american players take ground balls what dive into that a little bit for me <laughs> I think the, the American way is more technique, where the Latino have this, this flow of fielding ground balls with one hand. Uh, Sometimes that was what, what other people said when we were taking grounders. How come you don't take the ball with two hands? How come you don't, you don't do that? And, and, you know, I guess it's, it's like playing baseball in, this, in the bad fields when you were young, that, that you get to do all the, the one hand thing. Uh, I remember watching Tony Fernandez also was uh, from the Dominican Republic, a guy that always take ground ball and throw the ball on their hand all the time to first base. Those kind of things that uh, people start talking about. And, and they used to call us uh, hot dog, that we were hot dogs because we were uh, doing different things with the glove, but that's just the way that we, we, uh, we feel the, the, the ground balls. And you see, you know, you still see today, I mean, you look at some of the younger players, some of the young superstars in, in the game today. I, I think that that reference of, of a hot dog or, you know, maybe showing off. I, I think people get that perception of somebody like, a, like an Ellie De La Cruz, the shortstop now for the Reds. He, he's just he's so exciting to watch yeah. play. And I think for some people, they might take it maybe the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, like, like styles are so different you know when you see guys with that with that height 
and and the arm that he has, you know, he can do the kind of things that he does. And like, you know, my thing was the quickness. I like to get rid of the ball as quick as possible with a combination of my feet, uh, get set up in a different way. And, you know, that probably uh, rot off a, a differently with, with some infield coaches. And now you have, yeah, you have these infielders at Daylight Cruz. I don't, have you gotten a chance to watch Mason win the new shortstop for the Cardinals at all? I haven't, I haven't seen him yet playing uh, on the field, but what I heard and what I read about the guy is just kind of like uh, what most of the shortstop has. He has some good hands with a, a really, really good arm. He doesn't strike out much. He made contact. He got a lot of abilities on the field. And I think uh, that we are impressing of uh, of another great shortstop. Like, you know, the San Luis Cardinals used to have some great shortstop. I mean, you see uh, Royce Clayton after uh, Aussie uh, uh, retired. You see uh, guys like Renteria. Um, there were so many great shortstop that, that has been Einstein. Look at the style of, of, of Einstein. Uh, how he go over the top, you know, a short guy, and he played the position for a long time. So you can see there how all the different techniques show up. Well, you got, I mean, like a guy like Mason Wynn, Ellie Day, like, I mean, they're, they're throwing the ball at 100 miles an hour out there. <laughs> out there now. It's, it's oh, insane. It's, just, you know, it's crazy because I've been, I've been scouting some young talent from Venezuela. I went to Colombia just uh, this past month. And it gave me the opportunity to see the new talent that, uh, you know, Venezuela players has in, in, you know, between 13 and 16 years old. And these guys look like they are 20, 22 years old. The tools and the arms and the way that these guys move around the field is just amazing. And it just show you how much baseball has been evolving and their techniques and the teaching ways and the different ways that they're doing to improve the, the players. And the evolution of that position too, it's, it's really, when you think about it, I mean, shortstop always from a young age, it always seems like, oh, your best player plays shortstop. That's, you know, from the time you're 10 years old, learning to play the game, that, that best player is going to be the shortstop, but you're seeing that evolve over the years now too. As you mentioned, you're seeing these guys now as you're scouting, it seems like the talent or the skill set seems to be changing, but yet they're still the most talented, most athletic ones out there on the field, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the position of obviously is very demanding. It's very quick, and you see guys uh, that are really tall and strong moving like like light, like lightweight. Uh, you know, their feet move so fast. Uh, every position, like you see uh, first baseman, catchers, with these amazing bodies that can just hit the ball out of the ballpark. Before you, you get to see two or three guys in the team that carry the load of the heavy, uh, you know, the heavy balls, hitting the ball a long way. But these, these guys right now in every position can show you how strong they are. With, uh, you know, there was a, a flash in the pan of the shift that was that was so big in baseball for a handful of years and seemed to affect the game in so many different ways. And now it's gone as you're scouting. And as you see some of these younger players coming up, are, do you think that we're going to see any kind of effects from that? Or was it just is it already kind of passed to where we're not, you know, the young guys aren't going to be that affected? Man, I'm so glad that they get rid of the shift because it gives you uh, um, it give you more room to work with in your position. As a shortstop, when you move to the second base size, uh, you know you lose some of that athletic abilities to go over in the hole and make the play. I think it's great that you get to stay on the left side on the field. You get to show more range. And also the second baseman have to show uh, the, the quickness of his feet, turning the double play and everything. It's, it's just the way that we grew up watching the game and it's just the way that it should be. And yeah, I, I understand the analytics and I understand that you know, where, wherever the ball is going to be hit that you're supposed to be. But I think it takes a little bit away from the abilities of the infielders. And I think that is great that they just went back to the old, to the old ways. Yeah, it's uh, and you're see, I mean, you saw instant results too. You saw the batting averages go up, and you uh, you, you saw that the game. I mean, so as a former player, was it, how how often do you watch games a week? How are at the, at the major league level? I know you said you're scouting, but what is your involvement? And in, I guess just following the game, watching the game. How how much of a fan are you? 
Well, I am a big fan. Uh, I think it's hard for you to uh, to get rid of uh, your roots and the game that you love so much. You want to be connected to the game somehow, like I'm doing it. Uh, I probably watch two or three games uh, a week. But, uh, you know, it's hard to sit down the whole nine innings. You go to from game to game and start watching all the new talent and the way that the, the game has been developed. You know, I love to watch the Cleveland, India, the, the Cleveland Guardians uh, because of my roots that I had there. I, I like to see the, the Seattle Mariners now because it's one of the hottest teams that, that, that is playing baseball right now. The Atlanta Braves and watching this young guy, Ronald Acuna, uh, uh, playing the game has been just so exciting. All these new uh, players that are coming in and are making their mark in the big leagues. It's just very, very uh, uh, entertaining to see uh, these guys play the game. Yeah, you have, I mean, 60 stolen bases, 30 home runs. It never, never has been done before in baseball. And it's, he's, and he's we've got a whole month left in the season. So whatever numbers he sets this year are just going to be so unattainable for anybody in the future to kind of get to when you talk about Acuna. I know, man, the numbers that he's putting in and he's just making all the rest of the team being forgotten. I mean, uh, Osuna have 30 homers, also have 30 homers, and there is a bunch of guys there that are having great years, and, and <laughs> they're only talking about Acuna being the, the MVP, but, you know, it shows you the kind of talent the Atlanta Braves have this year. I think that's one of the teams that you have to count to be in the World Series, and it's just been a really exciting season overall. Well, Omar, I appreciate the time that you uh, you spent with us here today. As I said at the beginning, it's a shame that you are not yet in the Hall of Fame, but you still have uh, you still got years left. You still have uh, that that ballot, those numbers. You know, we just need somebody to get behind you and start leading the charge there to get those uh, to get those numbers back up and and get you in there in that uh, rightful place. Like I said, nearly a three thousand hits, eleven gold gloves. I mean, those those two numbers right there speak for themselves. Well, thank you, Joe. I think that is very important that, um, you know, you stay connected to the game. Uh, you know, it's given me the opportunity to work with kids now that I retire and, uh, you know, going around the communities and, and teaching the right fundamentals of the game and, uh, you know, showing the some leadership around these guys is very important. I know that a lot of people is talking about numbers and, and different ways to teach it, but you got to stay true to the game. And you have to try to uh, let these guys know, uh, play the game the right way. Omar, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Thank you for the time.